Good morning to everyone, and a very warm uh, welcome to all of you. Nice to see you this morning. Uh, one special uh, extra welcome uh, this morning. I want to say uh, welcome uh, to Colin Jenkins. Uh, Colin is uh, well known to many of you, probably most of you. And uh, he'll be talking uh, to us later on, uh, to the boys and girls first, and then uh, to all of us about uh, the work of uh, the uh, Seafarers mission that he's involved in. Um, so you're welcome back again, uh, Colin. Trust that God will bless you with our, uh, us this morning. Uh, just a couple of brief um, things to underline. Next Sunday evening, uh, normal service this evening, I will um, lead that. And then uh, next Sunday evening will be the Girls' Brigade enrollment service. Uh, so if you can come and support our company and our captain and the girls, uh, that would be uh, appreciated uh, next Sunday evening. And then uh, just one other uh, thing to mention. Uh, Tuesday um, past was... Uh, Robert Dick's birthday. I'll not tell you what age he was, um, but if you know anything about bingo calling, which I hope you don't, um, it's two fat ladies. Um, so um, the more important thing, though, is that next Tuesday, a week following, uh, next this Tuesday coming, uh, will be uh, Robert and Margaret's 60th wedding anniversary. Um, so that is really quite um, something, and. Um, I think Margareta is going to get a big medal. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, Isabel has got a beautiful little um, card, um, so, and it's sitting on the on the, on the foyer, the table on this side here. So um, if you would if you would like to, um, please do just sign your name um, on the card, and then uh, Isabel is going to take it round to them um, t t tomorrow. Uh, after Colin, after the service over, uh, Colin will go to that door. Uh, I'll go and shake hands with anybody at this side. Um, but uh, if you can uh, nip over, or if you're going to be here this evening, you can. It'll be out this evening. You can sign it then. But it'd be nice as a church just to recognise uh, that um, special occasion for Robert and Margareta. Uh, there's some other stuff we to pick up as well, but uh, Colin will mention uh, the material that he has brought, and that's available in both, both of the foyers on your way out. Let's worship God together as we sing our opening praise. My Jesus, I love thee, I know thou art mine.
and let us pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we come here into this place this morning to worship you because we love you and we want to be here to express that love and worship and adoration. We thank you, Lord, and love you because you have first loved us. You have reached down to us when we were rebellious and sinful and far from you. We thank you, Father, that you sent your Son, the Lord Jesus, to be the Savior of the world. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have worn on your brow that crown of thorns, uh, that the thorns that sprung up after the fall, the symbol of sin and rebellion, as an appropriate expression of what was happening upon the cross when wrath and judgment was poured out upon your perfect sweet head as you wore the crown of thorns for us. Lord, we thank you that we look forward to day when we will be gathered with all the redeemed to worship you, casting our crowns before you in worship and adoration. We thank you, Lord, that that day uh, will be a glorious day when we will be gathered with people from every tribe, from every language and every nation, from all around this globe, as together, as one people, as a redeemed people, we worship our risen Lord. We thank you, Lord, for those who uh, um, we have opportunity to witness to. We thank you, Lord, for those who come to us from other parts of the world. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing of the uh, outreach to the uh, Filipino uh, friends uh, yesterday. Um, bless, Lord, the, uh, the message that was shared with them. We thank you, Lord, for Colin, who's come to share with us this morning and for the opportunities that he has in Cork to reach out to seafarers from all over the world, from so many different nations, people from different tribes and backgrounds and uh, re religious backgrounds and cultural backgrounds. And we thank you for the opportunity to share the good news of Jesus with them. And as we hear about that and as we are encouraged to pray for Colin and for that work, uh, we ask, Lord, that this service this morning will be a blessing to us and a challenge. Forgive us, Lord, for our sins, things that we thought and said and done even in this week past. Forgive us, Lord, for our prayerlessness, for our lack of love and concern for our neighbors and our friends, and especially those, perhaps, who have come to live amongst us. Forgive us, Lord, and cleanse us. Fill us now again with your Holy Spirit, that he may enable our worship and change our lives and bring glory to your holy name. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Our Bible reading uh, this morning is the parable of the Good Samaritan, and we find it in Luke chapter uh, 10, uh, beginning to read at verse 25. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? He replied. How do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But the man wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So to a Levite, when he came to the place, saw him and passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was 
And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The experts in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus told him, go and do likewise. And may God bless his word to us. Now, boys and girls, come on up to the front, and Colin's going to do a little talk with you. I know some of you were in Sunday school, and you saw a whole pile of his pictures and, uh, and listened to some of his stories, but he's got something else interesting for you this morning. So up you come and sit at the front here. Good. Well, good morning, boys and girls. How are you? I saw you in Sunday school, maybe. Can you see this? <laughs> it's quite low down, obviously. It's a your size. Um, and I was telling you earlier about the, the teddies and the things I bring for the seafarers, the woolly hats, which the grannies knit. So there's another one. That's a big one. Really warm. Um, now, have any of you played that game before? Yeah? Uh, no? Okay. It's called Jenga, which means to build. Now, do any of you like building? Yeah, sand castles. What else can you build? Lego. Yeah, brilliant. And any of your parents, maybe builders? No. I used to work for a builder before, um, and I discovered it's much easier to knock a wall down than to build one. <laughs> well, um, you know, God is very interested in foundations, and so is the devil. Um, uh, in Jeremiah 23, this is about breaking down things. It says God's word is like a rock that breaks, like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. So um, just as this illustration, I was thinking, you know, it's very important, the foundations. Um, 1 Corinthians 3 says, no other foundation can man lay that, than Jesus Christ. Uh, Matthew 7, I'm sure you know this, the wise man built his house upon the rock, yeah, and the rains came down and the floods came up, and then the foolish man, the house went flat because it was built on the sand. So foundations are very, very important. But as I was thinking about this and the, this Jenga game, you can come and have a go here. <laughs> uh, but the, the aim, obviously, who's played it before? Yes, so you come down then and see if you can do it without collapsing it. Yeah, yeah. Like, not, not just you, any of you who wanted to have a go. <laughs> yeah, go, go ahead. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, yeah, come, come. You can come, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> see, depends where you start. It might be easier on the bottom, you know. But um, the idea, obviously, is not to collapse the whole thing. Um, so you can have one go each, and then whenever you have a go, let someone else have a go, maybe. Well done! <laughs> She's very happy there. Um, yeah, go ahead. No, you don't have to queue. Go ahead. Be Filipino. <laughs> no problem. You can come down, and you can share the, the game there. But I was thinking, you know, sometimes we go onto a ship. There's, <laughs> be careful, yeah? What are the things that we do, well done, yeah, that break down? Yeah, you put it on the top then. Um, so you can, keep, you can keep doing that. What are the things that we do? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you don't, you're very polite here. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> what are the things that we can do which will destroy those foundations? Because there's bad foundations as well, you know. Uh, mindsets. In 2 Corinthians 10, the weapons we fight with are not weapons of this world. Um, we have divine power. You can keep going, guys. Just keep going. Keep playing. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um, they have divine power to demolish strongholds, um, demolish arguments and every pretension. 
<laughs> See, there's things that need to be broken down sometimes, isn't there? Barriers, walls. Oh, but the thing, I think um, Reverend David might have been cheating. You're only allowed to use one hand. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, here are a few of the things that we do to help seafarers to break down those barriers, you know. So, I'll even have a go. Like, what do we do when we go to a ship? We smile at, <laughs> we smile at the people, you know. So, ooh, that was it. <laughs> so when you smile at someone, it helps, right? It helps to break down the barrier. When you bring them a woolly hat or toothpaste or a teddy bear, that's another one. So, it's not, are none of you helping me play this game? Come on, give me a hand. I need help. <laughs> come on. Come on, go, 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 go. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Don't be shy. Don't be shy. So, like, a smile, a handshake, free taxi, bring them to church, take them to the supermarket, help them send money home to their family, uh, bring them to McDonald's, visit them in hospital, taking time, listening to them, just being their friend. Sharing Jesus with them, praying with them, teaching them a Christian song, um, sharing the Bible. Yeah, there you're getting into the way of it now. <laughs> that was an easy one. <laughs> Having a service on board. Um, and then the thing is repeated again. When the ship comes back again and again, we're breaking down those unnecessary barriers with these people. Christmas presents from Kalibaki Methodist, little gift cards. Christmas presents, there's so many things. And you're, you're very um, good at this, you know. <laughs> You've played this before. But eventually, once we keep, yeah, go ahead, come on. <laughs> yeah, so um, whenever we show love, and love without strings. You know, so that's, the, that's the key thing, isn't it? <gasps> well done. Love with no strings attached. That is what just demolishes all these things. And eventually, eventually those, all those things we've done, and <laughs> their arguments come crumbling down. <laughs> Good timing, good timing. <laughs> so, no, but that's, it's good. Normally it's bad, but, but it's good um, what I'm explaining, you know, because that means we have made friends with the people. They trust us. They know that we're not there to get something. We're there to give them something. So well done. I was waiting for you to knock it down, actually. <laughs> Don't be sad. <laughs> Thank you so much, boys and girls. And uh, thanks for helping me with that little illustration. And do we have a children's? I'm going to say yes. If I don't, you were going to with the sun and uh, <laughs> with your... uh, why can't I don't know what you're going to say. If Jesus is both, I think this is the version you had. You know this one? Yes. Sure. Yeah. You can have us. Do you have a match for it? Uh, no. No. <laughs> Now with our um, prayers for others this morning, 
I want to pray uh, for Colin and for his family and for the work of the Seafarers Christian Friends Society and the work that's done um, by others as well uh, in various parts of this island and indeed beyond, uh, reaching out to those who work on the seas and that God will bless their ministry and bring many people to faith in Jesus. And then a little quiet time I'll leave in our prayer too for us to remember folks from our own church and our own circle of family and friends. And there have been a number of folks who have not been well of late. And uh, we want to pray God's healing and help for them. Gracious God, we thank you for Colin's work and ministry uh, these number of years now in Cork. And we thank you, Lord, that uh, he's able to come up every once in a while and share deputation uh, in a ver variety of, of churches and places. And we're glad to welcome him back again here this morning. And we pray uh, for him and for his uh, family, for Shunwa, for Aidan, and for Jenai. And we thank you, Lord, for the uh, work and ministry that they do uh, in, in, in Cork. Um, and it's nearly, um, I think it's 18, 20 years that they have been, been, been there, the column's been there. Will you continue to give him opportunities each day to share the love of Jesus with people who've come from all over the world, Thank you, Lord, for the pastoral care that he gives to people who are sick. And sometimes when sailors have accidents or something, they end up in hospital uh, in Cork. And Colin is able to uh, visit them and support them and help them uh, when perhaps these people are very far away from any uh, family and friends. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to go on to many different kinds of ship and share practical love, uh, bringing um, hats that some of the, the ladies here knit and others as well and, and, and provide uh, practical support and help uh, for the sailors. And especially sometimes some of them um, really maybe um, just living on the breadline and, and on ships where uh, one of the stories he was telling the boys at Sunday school was about a, um, a ship where they didn't even have clean water to drink on the ship. Uh, and so we thank you for these ways in which Colin and uh, others are able to uh, minister uh, to seafarers. And we ask, Lord, that you will bless their work and encourage them uh, uh, with many hearing about Jesus. And we trust, Lord, that more and more will come to put their faith uh, in Jesus and that you'll bless this work. Uh, we pray too, Lord, for our own church family, and, and we thank you, Lord, for uh, our harvest services. And uh, we thank you, Lord, for all that goes on um, uh, throughout uh, each day in the week, different activities with children and young people and, uh, and with um, uh, older people as well. Thank you, Lord, for the, uh, the loving hands, the little knitting group. Uh, I think Colin's going to go and call in with them tomorrow morning as they uh, will pass on to him um, a whole collection of hats and other things that the ladies have, have knitted over the year uh, for the seafarers. We thank you, Lord, for uh, the Saturday afternoon uh, outreach uh, to our Filipino friends. Thank you for the uh, competition that was organized yesterday and will carry on next Saturday with a, a great number of folks coming and enjoying uh, the fun and also listening to um, the sharing of the good news about Jesus. Will you bless that and bless uh, all who are involved um, in it? And Lord, uh, we just think of those who are not well and those who have been bereaved in recent times. And some, Lord, who are coming towards the end of their journey. Uh, Lord, we'll not mention specific names, but uh, just in a quiet moment, each of us will be able to, to call to mind someone from this church family who has been through surgery, who is waiting for surgery, uh, who is um, um, uh, in a nursing home or um, in, in support, care of some kind, um, those, Lord, who uh, we just want in the quietness to hold up before you, asking your healing and comfort and blessing for. So, Lord, will you hear and answer all our prayers for Jesus' sake? Amen. Now we bring our offering to God for his work.
Uh, before Colin comes uh, to speak uh, with us again, we're going to sing, uh, Will Your Anchor Hold in the Storms of Life? Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for your warm welcome, and it's great to be back with you, and uh, enjoyed being with the boys and girls at Sunday School before uh, the service. Um, so yes, I'm up north, um, and for those of you who aren't familiar, um, I, I'm a missionary for, it's a seafarer's mission. So um, my wife is from South Korea. We've been missionaries in Cork, um, it's about five hours drive south from Balamina, and we've been missionaries there for about 18 years now, Seafarers Christian Friends Society. Um, it's an organization, a charity, a mission. It's been around since 1846, um, non-denominational, evangelical, international seafarers mission, caring for people who live on board ships. So this morning, I... Uh, I wanted to share a few thoughts from the parable of the Good Samaritan. Um, there's so much for us in this uh, story that we read from Luke chapter 10. The expert in the law stood up to test or to prove or to some maybe to catch Jesus. That's nearly funny in itself, isn't it? How can you catch out Jesus. <laughs> um, now he asks a very good question and it's interesting Jesus didn't ask the question, he asked the question and often in ministry it's like that. We can wait for people to ask questions whenever they see something different in our lives. That's what happened with my wife, she grew up in a Buddhist family, she became a Christian, she saw something different in their lives and she wanted to know what is different about those people. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Now we know it's not by works, lest no one should boast. We can't earn our salvation. It's God's free gift. 
but it's a very good question and Jesus answers this question. It's the context of the parable and sometimes in the parable of the Good Samaritan, it's forgotten, eternity. Uh, someone said this to me during the week, are you just doing good or are you doing God? Sometimes in Christian ministry and mission work, it can be so focused on the social action and the good things that you're doing. Like I was sharing all those good things as we were knocking out those Jenga blocks. All those good things are good, but what's the difference being a Christian? What's the difference Jesus makes? There's many people from different religions who are doing wonderful things. What's the difference with us as Christians? Well, the context is eternal life. And there's a clock ticking until the end of the service, but there's a clock ticking on every one of our lives. Often we're not conscious of that and we just sail through life and we aren't living with eternity in view. Where is our next port in this world? After we pass away, there's only two ports, as I tell the seafarers, heaven or hell. We need to have the right captain, the right cargo, and the right nav navigation chart, the Bible, if we're going to go to heaven to be with Jesus. Loving God and loving your neighbor as yourself. Do this and you will live, Jesus says, verse 28. Um, I'm sure uh, this maybe rang a bell in the mind of the expert in the law. Genesis 42, 18, Joseph and his brothers didn't recognize him. It was after three days, Joseph told them, do this and live. This is just one other place in scripture where that could be a quote from. Do this and live. Um, who is my neighbor? Who is your neighbor? That's the question, isn't it? But at the end of this parable, we see this question is turned around. Instead of who is my neighbor, who can I be a neighbor to? Selfish or selfless. The gospel is about transformation. And I'm sure many times you, like myself, we have passed by on the other side. The good people supposedly in this parable, and then Jesus, you know, the scribe and the, the Levite, the priest and the Levite, they are meant to be the ones, the Christian, the good people, the gods, the people who are doing God's work. But sometimes religion can just be like um, cosmetic, isn't that right? But Jesus says, as the book of James tells us, faith without works is dead. We can, we can say all the right things, but someone said this wonderful expression, you probably know it. We don't care how much you know until we know how much you care. Do we care? Who cares? <laughs> Hypocrisy. There was a Turkish captain sailed into Cork uh, a week or two ago, and amazingly, the flag had, he had to paint the flag, the Italian flag, because you need an Irish flag to come into Ireland, and he didn't have one, so he painted the Italian flag to look like an Irish flag. <laughs> but it was making me think, you know, how many of us might have painted, you know? Jesus talked about whitewashed tombed, whitewashed tombs, now, full of dead men's bones. Challenging. Very challenging. In this parable, we obviously would like to identify with being a good Samaritan. But can we identify with being the priest or the Levite? We're passing by on the other side. Uh, a few, uh, was it last Monday night, uh, I was going to a meeting and I did feel guilty talking about the good Samaritan because I drove past someone broken down at the side of the road. <laughs> no, I should have stopped. But um, the... They seem to be getting on okay, but th that's just a funny example. But there's so many times. Do we know who's in need? What they're suffering with? Maybe they look fine on the outside. Maybe they've been beaten up on the inside. The hurts, the wounds, many of us carrying. But just um, uh, previous, it says, Jesus said in the end, the last verse of chapter 9, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Well, you know, there was a crew, the, not a cruise ship, it was a, a research ship that was in Cork and they have a plow on board the ship and they plow the seafloor. 
and they're laying an internet cable from Ireland to France and to Africa, 500 kilometers long internet cable. But remember the hymn says, the cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back. And I haven't plowed a field before, but when you turn and look at back, you're, you'll be all over the field. Um, you need to keep going forwards. Walter used to say, that's the person I took over from in the ministry, the past is history, the future's a mystery, but this moment is a gift. That's why it's called the present. <laughs> we need to let go of the past, the hurt, the bitterness, the unforgiveness, the anger. We just prayed the Lord's Prayer. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. How about also in earth as in heaven? In you and me, there's no anger, there's no bitterness, there's no unforgiveness in heaven. We shouldn't be carrying those things. We've got the present and the future. When we look back, chapter 9, um, Jesus said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit his very self? You know, in the world we live in, it's safety first, self-protection, and it's self, 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 isn't it? What about going across the street to the person in trouble, in need? That, that person who needs us. Sometimes they might not realize they need us. And then again, there can be, we all have to grow, don't we? To become more Christ-like, we need to grow. Maybe one time we walk down there, we don't even notice that person. Um, I'm speaking metaphorically. There's so many situations where we can give the love of Jesus, practically, spiritually. But maybe one time we're going down, we don't even notice them. Maybe later we notice them. And then it's working in our mind. Maybe later we decide we can do something about that. Someone said the, the, this progression, first of all, it's unconsciously incompetent. Then you become consciously incompetent. That means you're aware that you're not doing any good. And then you become consciously competent. You know you can do something and you do something about it. And then you become unconsciously competent. It means it's second nature and you're just doing good to people and loving as Jesus loved without even thinking about it. The Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. The disciples who wanted to call down fire on the Samaritan village. And Jesus said, you don't know what spirit you are of. Showing love to people who are maybe shunned or ignored by society. You know, the Jews and Samaritans, they weren't best friends. And this is the jaw-dropping moment when Jesus said, a Samaritan. Not the good people, supposedly, in the story. The Samaritan is the one who put these others to shame, so to speak. There's ten things that he did. And, um, well, verse 27, just going back a bit. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. But has anyone ever been able to do that in the history of the world? That's what Billy Graham said. No one, <laughs> only Jesus. But that's what we are called to do, isn't it? To be like Jesus. And we, you know, it's 10 things that he actually did. If you count the amount of things that the Good Samaritan did, there's 10 things he did in caring, in showing love, be doers of the word and not hearers only, the book of James says. Who can you and I be a neighbor to? Interestingly, just following this passage, it's about Mary and Martha. And there's a real balance, isn't there, between trying to do things and rather being sitting at Jesus' feet. Our identity. So those are few thoughts for us from this wonderful passage and I hope that we maybe have time later on today during the week to read this to reflect to meditate and to ask the Lord to speak to us more from his word um, then I have quite a few slides to show you to bring you up to date with the ministry on the ships
Um, obviously, um, Cork is, is a busy harbour. Um, the fishing boats, that's another occupation. There's lots of Filipinos work on the ships, on the, on the fishing boats as well. Hard, hard job. And we're kind of, I don't know if we're in the eye of the storm today, but last night was very stormy and we're not sure if another storm is, is coming. I think there's one very near us at the moment. Um, pray for the safety of seafarers. Pray for the safety of missionaries like me. Yesterday, a ship full of Syrians has come into Cork Harbour and that's very unusual. Very unusual to have a ship full of Syrians. So pray for my colleague Charles to go on board um, and be able to minister to them and help them and witness to them Arabic scriptures he'll be bringing. Last Sunday, interestingly, Charles was speaking in Waterford Methodist, their harvest service. Jesus said, follow me and he'll make us fishers of men. Well, I didn't know anything about ships. I studied forestry, I have a degree in trees. And uh, now I work on ships. Um, now I don't go away on the ships, so I don't get seasick. I stay in the harbour. The ships come in and out of harbour every day, and I go there and help them and be their friend. Uh, MarineTraffic.com, and it's an app and a website, but all the many, many ships in the world, out of sight, out of mind, but yet 90% of world trade happens because of seafarers. We depend on them. They're like our postmen and postwomen, um, living nine months usually every year on a ship. And one of these Filipino guys today is actually a seaman, a former seaman. So that's fantastic. <laughs> it's great that you have, uh, you know, maybe long ago in churches, there was people went to the mission field and they came back and they told all these stories of the faraway country. But now it's a global village. Isn't that right? <laughs> um, now, Charles, he lives in the, the little circle there. Uh, we live in the top one. He lives in the bottom one. That's in Middleton and Carrigaline. And it's, it's wonderful to have both sides of the harbor covered. There's about 10 places the ships come in. Caring for people. He was a Muslim cook from Indonesia. They worked on a fishing boat, which uh, the, one fish, tuna, cost 12,000 euros. And that's for one fish for the Japanese sushi market. Um, now, they only got $300 a month salary, but they stay on board the ship for two or three years without any holidays, it's like slavery, you know. Normal, they stay on board nine months every year and only three months at home with the family. Um, an important point, as I was saying, we get off the ship before the ship leaves the harbor. Go and make disciples of all nations and all nations coming to us every day. What an opportunity we have and have brought Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus into church with me. And it's such a privilege to be a witness, to be a friend, and to bring them to the Lord. Um, sometimes they've never heard of Jesus. And sometimes their name is Jesus. On ships before, I've met people whose name is Buddha and Muhammad and Jesus, Jesus. So it's busy, busy. And you might say, how do I talk all those languages? I do learn one or two words, and that's another one of those Jenga blocks. Right? When you speak a word in their language, they um, are very happy to hear that. Like, kabayan, como esta, mabuti, aislang, mabuhay. <laughs> that's Filipino, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Chinese, ni hao, she she, yesu aini. This, you learn a little bit in, in many languages, um, and they're so happy to hear their language. Um, helping them practically and spiritually. Um, in Ireland, we have Sam in Belfast, Jay is Dublin, and we're down in Cork. The children are growing up a lot now. Aidan is already 16, and Jenna is 13. And recently, ministry has started in Limerick Port as well. There's many ports around, so another prayer point is that ministry will be able to start in Waterford Port. So please be praying that more ports around Ireland will have a Christian witness and a missionary to the seafarers. Satan likes division and subtraction. But God likes addition and multiplication, and we want expansion. There's lots of seafarers' missions, but SCFS should have that difference, Jesus at the front. See, quite a few of the missions have just become about social care for people, and they've lost the spiritual element. That's some of the SCFS team. Uh, links in a chain, whether we pray, give, or go. Woolly hats, one lady did 400 in a year. And one man said, I've had this hat 20 years. And I said, you're due a replacement. <laughs> the key to a seaman's heart. 
the children from primary school coming onto a cruise ship. And that was wonderful. They made presents, they made cards, and getting the school involved was wonderful. And it was Jenna's last year in primary school, and she said, Dad, let's get this organized, go onto the cruise ship. And they really did love that. He's a Christian, and he leads a Christian fellowship on board the cruise liner. Um, now, some of these ships have 6,000 people on board one ship. There might only be 30 people in the Christian fellowship. Please pray for the, the church on the oceans. Um, they work really hard. They work 10 to 12 hours per day. Every day is Monday. And the only time they have for church is normally 11 or 11.30 at night on a Sunday. He's a Christian captain from Philippines as well. Uh, on board an LPG tanker and the family on board for a family service. But it's stormy, stormy weather. And imagine, oh, it's not working, this sad. <laughs> That's a gif, but it, it, you can, in, the, in the boys and girls, we saw it, the ship going up and down, up and down. And that's scary at sea in a winter storm. Car carrier and many cars on board. New cars coming in from Korea and a lot of electric cars as well. So there's constant marine traffic, steep, steep gangway. And the Turkish man was coming down to get a SIM card from my car. He couldn't speak any English, and the gangway was too um, risky to climb. But they came down. He was in his flip-flops, and his flip-flops came off. <laughs> and I put them at the bottom of the gangway for him. Um, visiting this man in hospital, he was six months in hospital. He was even in a coma. He had a heart failure on board. He's from Bulgaria, Radoslav. And me and my son Aidan went in to visit him. And he was in the coma. We were singing happy birthday to him. Um, not that day, another day I was in. And also playing worship songs in Bulgaria from YouTube to him, using a translator to talk to him. Also, this Indian man was in. He was off a cruise liner. And he was just across the ward from Radoslav. Then John, this is two summers ago, visited. And uh, it was great to see him. 1975, he sailed into Cork on a banana boat, met Walter got born again, became a Christian, and now he's a port mystery in his country for all these years. But he was able to visit us two summers ago, and that was wonderful. One of the crew on the cruise ship told me this is his mileage every day. I don't know how many of you have a step counter on your phone or whatever, but he does inside the ship. This is inside the ship, 19 decks, three times per day. He has to inspect all the places in the ship, 30 kilometers and 43 kilometers another day. So he was a very slim individual. <laughs> the ships are really massive. Now that's a normal cargo ship there, container ship, and we brought them bicycles. There's probably about uh, between 13 and 15, sometimes 12 people on board those ships. Russia, Ukraine, and Philippines. Very often many ships still have Russians and Ukrainians. Filipino captain, he was so happy. He said, Martin Otto in Hamburg gave me this Bible 30 years ago, and I still carry it with me on board. The crew members were over the moon, so happy that visitors had come. Very often they say, we're the, you are the only person who's visited us, who's showed any care for us. She was the only lady on board, a lady from Indonesia, Muslim, and she was so happy to get my colleague's book, How to Be a Successful Seafarer, which is endorsed by Manny Pacquiao, Pac-Man, Filipino boxer. <laughs> um, he's from Japan, and that was the first time he'd received a Bible. He was so happy to get it. Chinese, again. Jay in Dublin recently led a Chinese man to the Lord by uh, explaining the Chinese characters and how that fits into Genesis. He's from Myanmar, Burma on the right, and India on the left. The woolly hats, gifts, booklets, bring them to the zoo. I call it zoo therapy, and they're so happy because they work really, really hard, as I was saying, 10 or 12 hours every day. One man on a cruise ship told me about a week ago, he said he gets 600 pounds per month salary but a normal uk salary is 2000 per month another person said i get 1000 dollars per month but some of the passengers on the cruise ship they spend 11000 dollars every day on board so that's the world of contrast that we live in um, small man there uh, with the next scarf his name was baby <laughs> we meet so many funny names of crew members over the years michael from logos hope who came and he's uh, captain as well, uh, sorry, chief engineer, and praying for crew members. Ukrainians and Russians on board the same ship. It's been so hard. COVID was so hard. Obviously, the war um, and wars even in uh, Israel now. we Last summer, I met quite a few Israeli security guards, but this summer didn't meet any. The Matthew drug ship, 
Uh, it's been in Cork for a year now. I'm not sure if I was here last year. Um, did I tell you about this one? Maybe you're familiar. It was world news anyway. Two tons of cocaine on a ship arrived into Cork from South America. Some of the crew innocent. They've been sent home, 13 people, and eight are still in prison. Um, now, the ship is still there, and there's different crew members on board now. But when I went on board, um, which was soon after they arrived, they were drinking rusty water from the engine room, and I was able to bring them water. Um, I also brought them McDonald's, and Charles, another time, we brought them fresh fish, the karaoke machine. But they were under house arrest on a ship. There was police with guns, sniffer dogs, and they really were starting to have mental health issues. They were one month without internet before they arrived in Cork, and then they had everything confiscated, and they had no communication to the family. So it's uh, really amazing the different types of scenarios that we come across. Sometimes I've met people, they said we were hostage by pirates. Other times there was a fire on board. Other times no salary, uh, no food. Uh, one of the crew, when I was praying, he said, I said during the prayer, thank you, God, you're Emmanuel, you're with us, you never leave us or forsake us. And after the prayer, he turned to me and he said, my name is Emmanuel. And that was amazing. But he wrote a message back, thank you so much for caring for us, for sharing God's word with us. From one tragedy to another, ship sank, and the guy on the right from Ukraine, he described it, he said, it's like being stuck in a washing machine only two survivors from seven people on the ship. And previously we've baptized crew members of this small ship called Verity. Um, and this is what happened again. This um, is a, a moving image, but you can't find it on the internet. And the top ship crashes into the small ship. And that happened on 24th of October last year. And sadly, the small ship sank, Verity. And that was the newspaper headline. The only two survivors, really tragic. Some of the crew from this sister ship, they said we were supposed to be on that ship, but we were on another ship. Elephant or mouse, sometimes we might feel like a mouse, very timid. Sometimes we might feel like an elephant, like we've been on the Christian road a long time. But God's word should still convict us and change us and make us do something, spur us to action. As an elephant come into Dublin Zoo and a little teddy bear mouse for a crew member. Visiting in hospital then, he's a cook from one ship and he wanted to visit his friend from another ship who had jaundice. Um, and I think, is it the liver? He had problem. And even the white part of his eyes was yellow. But he recovered. His daughter wrote a little card and said, thank you so much for visiting my daddy in hospital. And you may have come across a book called The Five uh, Love Languages. It's for marriage and couples and relationships. But it applies to Christian ministry like us. Words of affirmation, giving gifts, acts of service, quality time. It's a very, one the seafarers really struggle with. How can they have quality time if they're nine months on a ship every year? In 30 years, they're only at home with their family for five years. Physical touch, caring for people, reaching out and helping them. Bringing, uh, that was in Cork Methodist, bringing some Muslims to church first time in their lives. And the cook on the bottom, the big guy on the, um, what side is the, on the left there, he told, turned to me in the service and he said, my friend, I think I will cry. <laughs> it was really amazing. And then Charles had this illustration with a gift, which he didn't know it was going to turn into a cross, but he was, my friend, I like this present for me. <laughs> he thought he was going to give it to someone and then Charles made it into the cross. And I'd shared the gospel with them already. Bringing Vietnamese and communists and sometimes Buddhists into church. All in was the name of the oil in the kitchen. I said, my name is like that, Colin. Chinese, getting gifts, getting Bibles. There was also Taiwanese on that ship. So sometimes you, some ships, Russians and Ukrainians on the same ship. Sometimes it's Taiwanese and um, Chinese on board together. The, a, a friend there who's a Christian hairdresser in Cork, she came on board and cut the hair for the crew members. Uh, the captain had asked me, he said, I need to get, the, a lot of the crew need their hair cut. So I got special permission from the harbor master. <laughs> but the Egyptian captain said, my wife must never know that a woman cut my hair. <laughs> uh, so it was quite funny. He was quite fundamental. Uh, the other Indonesians, 
struggled with him a bit. <laughs> uh, on the right hand side then, uh, he's from Russia, first time to get a Bible, and he said, I will read this book. He'd never had a Bible before. Spiritual food or physical food, bringing them on board. Um, <laughs> there's another expression you're probably familiar with the way to a man's stomach is through his uh, to his heart <laughs> got that mixed up is uh, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach isn't that right <laughs> so we bring them gifts and food as well sometimes shopping bring them on board but how about that as a missionary you need a multilingual stomach and you really need to pray before eating food on some of these ships that's Indian style and it's great it's like really going into another country and meeting and having fellowship with them and witnessing, sharing and uh, breaking bread with them in a sense, but not uh, the Lord's Supper, eating with them. That's a kind of uh, sharing. And then when you've eaten with them, they consider you one of them and you can share God's words to them. And they really accept that. They're spiritually hungry and they're far from home. There's a uh, ministry has started Limerick Port, which is wonderful. And we're so blessed to have Gordon and a team of three guys who go once a week to uh, Limerick Port. That was um, Turkish guys on a the ship there. This is our, our children were on board with me, a Peruvian fish factory ship. The Irish fishing boss decided instead of Latvia and Lithuania, he wanted Filipinos because they were cheaper. So he fired the other guys and then they were left high and dry and we helped them. Sunwa's family, South Korea, we were blessed to go there last Easter time. Please pray for four sisters still in Buddhism, but one sister and one brother are Christian. Uh, then the lady in purple, her name is Gospel from North India, Mizoram, Manipur, and some places there, they've really experienced very bad persecution. So we need to be praying for our brothers and sisters. Churches burned, houses burned. Her name is Gospel. Then Francis on the right-hand side, Filipino, he leads Christian fellowship on board a cruise liner. First time to see his baby. And because I'd given him a SIM card, he was so happy. He said, God sent you. God helped me to meet you to get this SIM card. Uh, six months from Christmas is called Seafarer's Day. And that's another opportunity to show love to the people on the ships. She's from Bhutan up in the Himalayas, a landlocked country. I'd been there when I was 20. Never expected to meet Bhutanese on board. She works in the spa on a cruise liner. And I was able to give her something in her language. Does anyone here know the name of the Bhutanese language? Zonka. <laughs> and uh, that is a real amazing, the Port of Cork has really blessed us by allowing us to have the use of this building and it's just a stone's throw from where the cruise ships come in. So this is real answer to prayer. Some of the cruise companies have seemingly closed their doors, not allowing missionaries and even chaplains, visitors on board. But yet we can put a poster up in the ship and lots of crew are coming out and we have a team of volunteers in Cork, which is wonderful. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son. Now I've told you many times the type of three passengers on a cruise ship, the newlywed, the overfed and the nearly dead. <laughs> but uh, sometimes churches can be in that category, right? But we, we might be overfed, but we need to get into action. We need to put into practice, practice what you preach. Um, so the cruise ships are really are a challenge, but God has helped us. Now the cruise season now, obviously winter time is coming to an end, but Martin Otto in Hamburg said all year round they have cruise ships. So he must have real stamina over there in Hamburg. So it's amazing that some of these ships have about 60 nationalities of crew members, 2,000 crew members and 4,000 passengers. He's a Sikh and pray he will seek Jesus. He's a long beard, a turban, carries a knife everywhere. He's part of his religion. Really lovely guy, and I've got a good friendship with him. In the middle, he has a wonderful quote, and this ties in with the Good Samaritan. His name is Emmanuel. He said, we were Hindu, and the one on the right then, the bosun, is a Hindu. But this man, Emmanuel, he said, we did everything for our gods. They did nothing for us. Um, we did nothing for Jesus. He did everything for us. So in the parable of the Good Samaritan, you know, he did everything for him. And, you know, some of us might be like that beat up man at the side of the road as well, carrying all those things from before. 
the Turkish Muslim captain who came to church with us a few Sundays ago, and that was really, uh, we've done this before, but he was, he was very, very open. And we pray God's word will rest and bear fruit in his life. Our family on board, thanks for your prayers ongoing throughout the years, the practical help, the hats and the gifts. Pray until something happens. Push. Um, the church is not a pleasure cruise. It's not a battleship. Jesus has won the victory. Ephesians 6 reminds us we are in a spiritual war. And you can see in the, again, the parable of the Good Samaritan, that man was attacked and robbed, beaten up, left half dead. The devil is wicked. John 10, 10, the thief, the liar, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus come to give life and life abundant. So we shouldn't be unaware of his devices, but we should be on mission. Every one of us, a full-time Christian, not just for an hour on Sunday, but during the week. A lifeboat, a bridge builder, caring and loving. Building bridges, and the door closes sometimes, but there's an open door and we're still blessed to be involved in this wonderful ministry to the nations. So thank you so much. Last slide, I think, but that one says we don't uh, know where to look. So sometimes we don't know where to look, but our eyes should be on Jesus. Ongoing ministry and Charles and Mary, he's covering for me while I'm up north in deputation. Pray for him uh, over the next day or two as he goes to this Syrian ship. And um, I'm looking forward to meet Jay, the Dublin missionary, and we'll do one meeting together at least. Um, ongoing ministry. Also, one man has now started in Aberdeen Port in Scotland. He just moved from Belfast about three weeks ago. Pray for him. His name's Ian. He's moved there with his wife, Rosie, to start the ministry in Aberdeen. So thank you so much. And um, we're having the final hymn together. Uh, good nautical one. Brightly beams our Father's mercy from his lighthouse evermore. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful time with your family. And help us to be those lower lights, lower lights, which shed light upon the way for people struggling, people who are fainting along life's journey. Thank you, Lord, that you are the great lighthouse and you give your light and give us your light to carry to the nations. And we pray uh, your blessings with everyone here and their families. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.